Hi, my name is Karthik Rangappa. In this video, let's try and understand the concept of moneyness of an option. We ended the previous video with a bunch of questions, mainly around the factors that influence the premium. We were curious to understand what really drives the premium up or down. Now, before we go ahead and deeper in that dimension, we need to understand another concept called the moneyness of an option and how it influences the premium. The moneyness of an option indicates how an option by expiry will end up in a favorable outcome to the buyer. Now, let's keep the call option buyer in perspective. What do you think is the favorable outcome for a call option buyer? Well, I hope you recollect. After you buy an option, there are only three possible outcomes. Either the stock price increases, stays flat or decreases. And the only favorable outcome to the call option buyer is that the price of the underlying increases by expiry. Likewise, the favorable outcome for a put option buyer is that the price of the underlying actually decreases from the time the trader has bought the put option. Let's dig a little deeper. I'll take the example of Reliance and look at all the strike prices that are available for me to trade. If you're looking at the screen for the first time, it can be a little overwhelming. I don't want you to pay attention to the entire screen. Rather, just pay attention to the centermost column, which represents all the strike prices that are available for you to trade. And also look at the last traded price, which has the last traded price of the premium associated to a particular strike. Now, Reliance is trading at 2560. Let me pick a strike which is trading closest to this price. So let's pick the 2560 option. Now here's something I want you to think about. The expiry of this option as per the contract is on the last Thursday of October. Now forget about that. Let's assume that the expiry is happening right now. Now, given the fact that the expiry is happening right now, what is the likelihood of this particular option being favorable to the call option buyer? Clearly, because the strike price and the underlying price is roughly the same, there is a 50-50% chance that the strike will end up in a favorable position to the call option buyer. Therefore, this particular option is called at the money option or simply the ATM option. Let's look at another option. Let's take 2460 for instance. Now the question is the same. If the expiry were to happen right now, would this option end up in a favorable situation to the option buyer? Of course it would because the strike is 2460 whereas the underlying is trading 100 points higher, which is 2560. Hence, the call option buyer here would definitely want to exercise the right to buy the stock. Such options where the call option buyer has an incentive to exercise his or her right is called in the money option or simply the ITM option. Lastly, let's look at a strike price which is much higher than the current market price of Reliance. Let me pick 2780 for instance. The same question holds true. If the expiry were to happen right now, would you as a call option buyer exercise your right on a 2780 call option? Of course you wouldn't. It simply wouldn't make sense to exercise your right to buy Reliance at 2780 when Reliance is trading at 2560. Why would you want to do that? Therefore, all these options where it doesn't make sense to exercise your right is called out of the money option or simply the OTM option. Now, I want you to do a similar exercise for the put option. The screen that you are looking at right now contains all the strike price for a given underlying. And all these different strike prices can be bunched under either in the money, at the money or out of the money options. Such a screen where you can visualize this for both calls and puts is called the option chain. You can do a similar exercise for the put option and identify which are all the strike prices which are out of the money 
at the money and in the money you will realize that the at the money for put is the same as at the money for calls as well so for any underlying there is only one at the money option in a put option all the strike prices which are lower than the current market price are the out of the money options and all the strike prices which are higher than the current market price becomes the in the money options this is exactly opposite to the call options so if you are getting confused about how to identify in the money out of the money or at the money option a simple trick is to look at the option chain in this case i am looking at an option chain powered by sensible what sensible does is that they highlight all the in the money option in a light yellow background and all out of the money option in a white background so whenever i look at an option chain instantly i i can identify which are the options which are in the money and the options that are out of the money lastly i want you to notice that whenever you look at an option chain and identify the in the money options you will soon realize that the in the money options always has a higher premium compared to out of the money and at the money options this is true for both calls and puts another thing that i want you to observe is that the level of activity is always higher around the at the money option as compared to out of the money and in the money options key takeaways from this video are 